Heaven by St. Alphonsus Liguori. What is heaven like? What delights are found in heaven? What is the greatest blessing in paradise? Will there be sorrow in heaven? I invite you to listen to this episode of SOS Sermons of Saints to hear St. Alphonsus explain these great mysteries and more. The text of this sermon is in the public domain. All of the pictures used in this video are also in the public domain. The following Virgo Potens production is a narrated video of a sermon by St. Alphonsus Liguori, narrated by Tony Capobianco. Second Sunday of Lent on Heaven Lord, it is good for us to be here. Matthew 17, 4 In this day's Gospel we read that wishing to give his disciples a glimpse of the glory of paradise in order to animate them to labor for the divine honor, the Redeemer was transfigured and allowed them to behold the splendor of his countenance. Ravished with joy and delight, St. Peter exclaimed, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Lord, let us remain here. Let us nevermore depart from this place, for the sight of thy beauty consoles us more than all the delights of the earth. Brethren, let us labor during the remainder of our lives to gain heaven. Heaven is so great a good that to purchase it for us, Jesus Christ has sacrificed his life on the cross. Be assured that the greatest of all the torments of the damned in hell arise from the thought of having lost heaven through their own fault. The blessings, the delights, the joys, the sweetness of paradise may be acquired, but they can be described and understood only by those blessed souls that enjoy them. But let us, with the aid of the Holy Scripture, explain the little that can be said of them here below. According to the Apostle, no man on this earth can comprehend the infinite blessings which God has prepared for the souls that love him. I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man, what things God hath prepared for them that love him. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 In this life we cannot have an idea of any other pleasures than those which we enjoy by means of the senses. Perhaps we may imagine that the beauty of heaven resembles that of a wide extended plain covered with the verdure of spring, interspersed with trees in full bloom, and abounding in birds fluttering about and singing on every side, or that it is like the beauty of a garden full of fruits and flowers, and surrounded by fountains in continual play. Oh, what a paradise to behold such a plain, or such a garden! But, oh, how much greater are the beauties of heaven! Speaking of paradise, St. Bernard says, O oh man, if you wish to understand the blessings of heaven, know that in that happy country there is nothing which can be disagreeable, and everything that you can desire. Although there are some things here below which are agreeable to the senses, how many more are there which only torment us? If the light of day is pleasant, the darkness of night is disagreeable. If the spring and autumn are cheering, the cold of winter and the heat of summer are painful. In addition, we have to endure the pains of sickness, the persecution of men, and the inconveniences of poverty. We must submit to interior troubles, to fears, to temptations of the devil, doubts of conscience, and to the uncertainty of eternal salvation. But after entering into paradise, the blessed shall have no more sorrows. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. The Lord shall dry up the tears which they have shed in this life, and death shall be no more, nor mourning, nor crying, nor sorrow shall be any more, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Apocalypse 21, 4 and 5 In paradise, death and the fear of death are no more. In that place of bliss there are no sorrows, no infirmities, no poverty, no inconveniences, 
no vicissitudes of day or night, of cold or of heat. In that kingdom there is a continual day, always serene, a continual spring, always blooming. In paradise there are no persecutions, no envy, for all love each other with tenderness, and each rejoices at the happiness of the others, as if it were his own. There is no more fear of eternal perdition, for the soul confirmed in grace can neither sin nor lose God. In heaven you have all you can desire. Behold, I make all things new. There everything is new, new beauties, new delights, new joys. There all our desires shall be satisfied. The sight shall be satiated with beholding the beauty of that city. How delightful to behold a city in which the streets should be of crystal, the houses of silver, the windows of gold, and all adorned with the most beautiful flowers. But oh, how much more beautiful shall be the city of paradise! The beauty of the place shall be heightened by the beauty of the inhabitants, who are all clothed in royal robes, for according to St. Augustine they are all kings. How delighted to behold Mary, the Queen of Heaven, who shall appear more beautiful than all the other citizens of Paradise, but what it must be to behold the beauty of Jesus Christ. St. Teresa once saw one of the hands of Jesus Christ, and was struck with astonishment at the sight of such beauty. The smell shall be satiated with odors, but with the odors of Paradise. The hearing shall be satiated with the harmony of the celestial choirs. St. Francis once heard for a moment an angel playing on a violin, and he almost died through joy. How delightful must it be to hear the saints and angels singing the divine praises. They shall praise thee for ever and ever. Psalm 83, 5 What must it be to hear Mary praising God? St. Francis de Sales says that as the singing of the nightingale in the wood surpasses that of all other birds, so the voice of Mary is far superior to that of all the other saints. In a word, there are in paradise all the delights which man can desire. But the delights of which we have spoken are the least of the blessings of paradise. The glory of heaven consists in seeing and loving God face to face. Totum quod expectamus, says St. Augustine, due syllabae sunt Deus. The reward which God promises to us does not consist altogether in the beauty, the harmony, and other advantages of the city of paradise. God himself whom the saints are allowed to behold, is, according to the promises made to Abraham, the principal reward of the just in heaven. I am thy reward, exceeding great. Genesis 15, 1. St. Augustine asserts that, were God to show his face to the damned, hell would be instantly changed into a paradise of delights. And he adds that, were a departed soul allowed the choice of seeing God in suffering the pains of hell, or of being freed from these pains and deprived of the sight of God, she would prefer to see God and to endure these torments. The delights of the soul infinitely surpass all the pleasures of the senses. Even in this life, divine love infuses such sweetness into the soul when God communicates himself to her that the body is raised from the earth. St. Peter of Alcantara once fell into such an ecstasy of love that, taking hold of a tree, he drew it up from the roots and raised it with him on high. So great is the sweetness of divine love that the holy martyrs in the midst of their torments felt no pain, but were, on the contrary, filled with joy. Hence, St. Augustine says that, when St. Lawrence was laid on a red-hot gridiron, the fervor of divine love made him insensible to the burning heat of the fire. 
hoc igne incensus non sentit incendium. Even on sinners who weep for their sins, God bestows consolations which exceed all earthly pleasures. Hence, St. Bernard says, If it be so sweet to weep for thee, what must it be to rejoice in thee? How great is the sweetness which a soul experiences when, in the time of prayer, God, by a ray of his own light, shows to her his goodness and his mercies towards her, and particularly the love which Jesus Christ has borne to her in his passion. She feels her heart melting, and as it were dissolved through love. But in this life we do not see God as he really is. We see him, as it were, in the dark. We see now through a glass in a dark manner, but then face to face. 1 Corinthians thirteen twelve. Here below God is hidden from our view. We can see him only with the eyes of faith. How great shall be our happiness when the veil shall be raised, and we shall be permitted to behold God face to face. We shall then see his beauty, his greatness, his perfection, his amiableness, and his immense love for our souls. Man knoweth not whether he be worthy of love or hatred. Ecclesiastes 9, 1. The fear of not loving God and of not being loved by him is the greatest affliction which souls that love God endure on the earth. But in heaven the soul is certain that she loves God and that he loves her. She sees that the Lord embraces her with infinite love, and that this love shall not be dissolved for all eternity. The knowledge of the love which Jesus Christ has shown her in offering himself in sacrifice for her on the cross, and in making himself her food in the sacrament of the altar, shall increase the ardor of her love. She also sees clearly all the graces which God has bestowed upon her, all the helps which he has given her to preserve her from falling into sin and to draw her to his love. She shall see that all the tribulations, the poverty, infirmities, and persecutions which she regards as misfortunes have all proceeded from love and have been the means employed by divine providence to bring her to glory. She shall see all the lights, loving calls, and mercies which God had granted to her after she had insulted him by her sins. From the blessed mountain of paradise she shall see so many souls damned for fewer sins than she had committed, and she shall see that she herself is saved and secured against the possibility of ever losing God. The goods of this earth do not satisfy our desires. At first, they gratify the senses, but when we become accustomed to them, they cease to delight. But the joys of paradise constantly satiate and content the heart. I shall be satisfied when thy glory shall appear. Psalm sixteen fifteen. And though they satiate, they always appear to be as new as the first time when they were experienced. They are always enjoyed and always desired, always desired and always possessed. Satiety, says St. Gregory, accompanies desire. Thus, the desires of the saints in paradise do not beget pain, because they are always satisfied. And satiety does not produce disgust, because it is always accompanied with desire. Hence, the soul shall always be satiated and always thirsty. She shall be forever thirsty and always satiated with delights. The damned are, according to the apostle, vessels full of wrath and of torments, vessels of wrath fitted for destruction. Romans 9, 22. But the just are vessels full of mercy and of joy, so that they have nothing to desire. They shall be inebriated with the plenty of thy house. Psalm 35, 9. In beholding the beauty of God, the soul shall be so inflamed and so inebriated with divine love that she shall remain happily lost in God. 
For she shall entirely forget herself, and for all eternity shall think only of loving and praising the immense good which she shall possess for ever, without the fear of having it in her power ever to lose it. In this life holy souls love God, but they cannot love him with all their strength, nor can they always actually love him. St. Thomas teaches that this perfect love is only given to the citizens of heaven, who love God with their whole heart and never cease to love him actually. Justly, then, has St. Augustine said that to gain the eternal glory of paradise, we should cheerfully embrace eternal labor. Pro eterno requie eternus labor sabe undus esset. For nothing, says David, shalt thou save them. Psalm 55, 8. The saints have done but little to acquire heaven. So many kings who have abdicated their thrones and shut themselves up in a cloister. So many holy anchorets who have confined themselves in a cave. So many martyrs who have cheerfully submitted to torments to the rack and to red-hot plates have done but little. The sufferings of this life are not worthy to be compared to the glory to come. Romans 8, 18. To gain heaven, it would be but little to endure all the pains of this life. Let us then, brethren, courageously resolve to bear patiently with all the sufferings which shall come upon us during the remaining days of our lives. To secure heaven, they are all little and nothing. Rejoice, then, for all these pains, sorrows, and persecutions shall, if we are saved, be to us a source of never-ending joys and delights. Your sorrows shall be turned into joy. John sixteen twenty. When, then, the crosses of this life afflict us, let us raise our eyes to heaven and console ourselves with the hope of paradise. At the end of her life, St. Mary of Egypt was asked by the abbot St. Zosimus how she had been able to live for forty-seven years in the desert where he found her dying. She answered, With the hope of paradise. If we be animated with the same hope, we shall not feel the tribulations of this life. Have courage. Let us love God and labor for heaven. There the saint expects us, Mary expects us, Jesus Christ expects us. He holds in his hand a crown to make each of us a king in that eternal kingdom. End of St. Alphonsus Liguori's Sermon on Heaven Narrated by Tony Capo Bianco. Welcome to the Virgo Potens YouTube channel. If you enjoy this video, give it a like. I also invite you to subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss new content. Please prayerfully consider supporting my work by becoming a patron of Virgo Potens on Patreon and or by buying one of my books. My ebooks are available on Amazon as well as on the Apple Bookstore. For those who prefer a physical copy rather than an ebook, my book, Spiritual Warfare Know Thy Enemy, is also available as a paperback on Amazon. If you are interested in making a one time contribution, I suggest that you do so by simply buying one of my books. I am thankful for your support. Links to Patreon and to my books will be posted in the comments section of this video. The continuation of this work isn't possible without you. Lastly, and most importantly, please pray for me. May the Virgin Most Powerful guide and protect you.